Oh, this is Dr. Mobin Sayed from drmobin.com. Welcome to one more show. This is our first show in the morning. That is why my voice is like this. So today we will talk about uh, number one, what is the situation of the cases in UK, Germany, India. We will also see a an island that has become 100% fully vaccinated, two vaccinations. And so they are the safest island, at least within the UK. That I thought that was an interesting one. And then we look at a, a live cam as well for London. And we would look at the cases why they're rising in uh, India. With that, we would also have our chit chat as well. So welcome to everyone. Uh, I wanted to, <laughs> so Nick is saying that he's from Canada. Uh, so morning to everyone, welcome. And I wanted to show you, Nick, something that is going to make you happy. And I think France as well. Check this out. Overall best countries ranking. This is 2021. Canada is the best country in the world, according to whatever their ranking parameters are. Japan is second. Germany is third. Switzerland is fourth. Australia, fifth and then United States, my country. So uh, Australia, <laughs> uh, we have a number of folks from Australia as well. So Australia is above us, then New Zealand, UK, Sweden, and so on. So we are sixth best country in the world, and Canada is the best, first best country in the world. So congratulations to Canada. OK, so wanted to see some of the cases as well. There, I think there is a lot of worry about the cases in India and Germany and generally in these areas. So let's see, starting with the Israel as usual. So the Israel daily cases have really gone down almost towards the end now. So that is a good news. Active cases are now 3,200. At this time, they used to be 2,000. They used to be before that 105 and before that nothing. So they are actually going downwards and that is good. I would suspect that the deaths are following the same as well. So Israel is on a good trajectory. That is excellent. Here is UK. So for me, there is a curiosity that UK opened up on this 12th or partially opened up on 12th. And so I wanted to see how UK is doing, although it is only a couple of days. So to be able to say that, hey, there is a uh, reassurance that what they're doing is not hurting or there is a change, it is too early. But so far, if you see the cases on 12th were actually low, uh, cases on 13 are low as well. So at least the reporting of the cases, I do not know if there is a delay there, reporting and then updating here on this uh, Worldometer site. But so far, it seems fine. And I wanted to look into the cam as well. So here, I have an Earth cam. I think this is London. So if you see here, there is some traffic. And so this is Abbey Road. I, I do not know how busy or not busy normally it is, but I wanted to see if people are still wearing masks or they have become vaccinated and they're not wearing masks. I do not know. So if you are from London, please tell us how are things over there. So um, this is London. Not a lot of information from this live uh, view. I saw some folks walking about a little earlier. For example, look at this person going there somewhere on a bicycle. And here is another person uh, walking. Do you think she's wearing a mask? She may not be, but, and I think she's drinking some something as well. So she's not wearing a mask. So anyway, so that is London. Um, then let's go back to the, so a couple of news. I'll go to this in a second. Let's look at Germany. Germany is uh, once again becoming uh, hammered by the coronavirus. 
So if you see here, so Hel Helen is here. She is the London Bean. Hello, Helen. So we were just looking at your city or a, a street there. So this is Germany. And if you see here, the cases are increasing again. And the last seven days moving average is increasing too. Germany's ICUs are becoming packed again. Their news was that they are mostly now trending towards youngsters. Active cases are increasing in Germany and the deaths are following as well. And then here is India and we'll talk a little more about India in a second. Once again, this is scary that the this wave is just going up very fast. It is not a slow movement. It is a very rapid movement. And active cases have gone to their worst so far, 1.3 million. And the deaths are following that as well. Let's see Pakistan, um, similar situation. The Of course, the population is different, 1.38 billion versus 220 million. So the population is less, the number of cases could be less, but you can see that there is a clear wave and this wave was uh, is rapid as well. Although this wave seems to be rapid too. To me, it seems like a little bit of carelessness on the people. Pakistan is under lockdown as well. Je uh, India has imposed curfew in cities like Mumbai. And so the Pakistan's active cases have gone up as well. And Unfortunately, the deaths have followed that. So that is about the new cases. Uh, I would look at other cases if you would like. I just want to quickly share the, the news round out that I saw in the morning. So AstraZeneca vaccine, Denmark stops rollout completely. So they, they are saying that no youngster or no older age, we are just stopping it for the time being. So they have stopped the rollout completely. Some of the countries have started it for the uh, for the advanced age and young youngsters are not given this and here i think that we would have a similar uh, possibility with j and j vaccine as well that that is going to have a similar uh, reaction this is the this is the news i wanted to talk about so this is an island in uh, uk fair isle and they have a total population of 48 and they are all fully vaccinated. So that is the safest place in London, uh, in UK. So this is the island, 48 people's population, all fully vaccinated. So I thought you would like this one. Maybe we should all go visit this island together and meet there. So this is that island here. So I love this one. Uh, so now talking about India, let's start doing some uh, questions as well and talk about India too. The thing that I continue to look for is the India's daily trend state wise. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I want to see if there is ivermectin used. For example, I keep thinking that Uttar Pradesh has it because that has what FLCCC and other uh, cool beans have sent me. So if that is the case, what are their cases look like? So here is Maharashtra. Maharashtra is the worst hit at this time. And they had the record number of new cases as well, I think, yesterday. So if you see here, this is Maharashtra's chart. So I had been trying to find some decent chart which can actually show me state this kind of a trend, but at a state level. So if somebody knows that trend. So most of the numbers that I'm seeing are just, hey, this state, here is the number. But this trend is not what I'm able to see yet. So for example, here we see Maharashtra 3.5 million. So cases 3.5 million, share of population 1 in 32, deaths 1 in 1920. But what is on daily basis? What is the trend? Was it always like that? Or is it just increased? Is it increased in last five days, seven days, 10 days? That's what is easily in understandable from the trends. And I can't find that trend yet. Um, <clears throat> here, COVID life, 15 day Maharashtra curfew begins rec record 17,282 cases in Delhi. So there is a uh, not so good situation there. And so they have imposed a curfew. In charts, how bad is India's COVID-19 deaths? Skip updates. 
Um, so if you see here, this seems to be a trend. Th what this trend shows is kind of worrying. What this is, is this was, I believe, US. And if you see, US has gone down. And I used to look at India and say, well, we here in the US are lesser population and look at what is our situation. So India is doing something really good. But now you and again, comparing US to India from a population point of view is not fair as well. 1.38 billion versus 330 million. So we are almost four times smaller. But still, if you see here, we were very badly affected. And now US has controlled it and India is going upwards. All the rest of the countries have controlled it as well. So there is uh, something concern, con concerning about India. And so India's hotspot is Maharashtra at this time. And this is what's happening. Uh, then one more. So this is my attempt to try to find charts. So I was trying to find some charts here. and. Um, these are the data points. So I'll stop those and let's remove some of these tabs because they start churning my processor. And, <clears throat> and now let's see if we have any questions here. So how is everyone doing? Are you safe, sound, happy, healthy? Um, let's start. Doug says, I don't think it's fair to blame the people where there is an increase in case. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think that anybody intentionally want to. Uh, Nancy Park says, question, India is supposed to be using ivermectin. Any thoughts on that? And that is why I was looking at it. Uh, what I heard was Uttar Pradesh state was um, using ivermectin and Maharashtra was not. And there are more cases in Maharashtra, but I don't think if that is just because of ivermectin. Maharashtra also has Mumbai, which is the largest city there. So there is more population density in some areas in Maharashtra. So that is the kind of uh, trying to look for. And that is only possible if I can see the trends of states with if they're using ivermectin or not. So Mukund Gupta says, I'm from India, Mr. Bean. Is Oxford vaccine effective? So Oxford vaccine, um, we're talking about the AstraZeneca. It is effective. Uh, yes, it is effective. Is Oxford AstraZeneca? Yes. Uh, yes. Cat B says, hi, Dr. Bean. I'm from Hungary. What about those who already had COVID and get want only one Pfizer vaccine? I mean, the chance of getting the South African variant, what do you think? Very, very good question. And what we have seen is, look, uh, I'll give you my traditional answer. Somebody who had have COVID and has beaten it, they don't need a vaccine. They are already protected and they are good enough. So that's my opinion part. That is from the mechanisms which we have seen with the COVID and with SARS-CoV-1 and MERS-CoV. So after saying that, this is, a this is a genuine worry that maybe the South African variant has changed a lot from the original wild type. And maybe it is important to protect ourselves and take those vaccines that are um, against this variant. Interestingly, these new vaccines are actually not against this variant, UK or South Africa or other. They were actually against the original wild type. It is just that they can actually very effectively take care of these as well. Maybe less efficacy, but they still can do it. Having said that, to answer your question, having another a dose of vaccine uh, while you are aware of all the side effects and everything, if you would like to, one dose would not hurt. And I did a study a few days ago where we discussed that those people who are vaccinated, you can see that these the title of the video is uh, vaccine after COVID. So if you see that one dose or two dose, they were equally efficacious. So even one dose is sufficient after the COVID, if you would like to have it. Yes. So Liza says, um, Dr. Mubin, WHO said today that animal-human contact is still a problem, Denmark Minx. Have you explained how that kind of transmission mechanism works? I haven't explained that yet, but I think that's a good topic to discuss. 
this uh, animal human transmission and animal to animal transmission human to human transmission this is going to stay this is part of our life so it's a good topic we can talk about it so I just saw a question Maru, thank you very much for the super chat. And there's a question as well. A friend in Italy, age 78, received Astra on March 19. March 19. So this is April 14, almost a month ago. On April 11, he was admitted to hospital with slurred speech, possible vaccine response. So it could be because of the hemorrhage in the brain, which can cause slurred speech. And it could be other things as well. Age is such that we are all going to experience um, bleedings and strokes. I hope we don't, but that is part of aging. So there, there could be something else as well, but it could be the vaccine too. Normally, it happens within the first two to three weeks when the adaptive arm has become active and the um, the antibodies are formed. One way to figure that out is to just get the antibody test for a platelet factor four. Show sure how they may have already done it. And I, I wish them speedy recovery, full recovery. Fru and these <laughs> Fru and Dice says. A question hi from madagascar hello back to you vanilla bean hello i want to forward your videos on ivermectin to our ministry of health but they are asking the sources of the studies can you share the links that you compiled with each video under each video in the description there are always the links so i have always uh, put the links there for this kind of a situation where somebody is looking for a reference they can go to that link so please see if you can find those links in the description. Muhammad Zubair says, can anyone on steroid inhaler for asthma take vaccine? Yes, I think it is totally fine. Um, Billy Moore says, hi from Tennessee. Hello, back to you. Might vaccines weaken our natural immune system? No. They would only strengthen the immune system to fight against the virus, but they will not weaken our immune system. There is no mechanism where a vaccine or an infection can weaken our immune system unless the infection is against the immune system, for example, HIV. Rahul says Favipiravir's efficacy. It has shown some efficacy, but not as good as other medications as well. But please do me a favor. I have a video that I've done about Favipiravir. Just search it in my channel and you can see it. GMT Hero says, why heparin is dangerous in treating blood clots? Very good question. The, the reason that heparin especially is contraindicated is not because heparin itself is bad. It is actually a very good drug for treating blood clots. The problem is that there is a known disease called heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, which has a very similar target, actually the same target as we are seeing with vaccines. And uh, again, when I say as we are seeing with the vaccines, many people would comment and say, this is not vaccine. Fine associated with vaccine the folks who had the vaccine and then they had blood clots the the antibodies that we are seeing in them are against the platelet factor 4 these are the same antibodies that we saw that we see against the platelet factor 4 in heparin induced thrombocytopenia so that means heparin and possibly vaccine can attack the same target so now imagine I got the vaccine. I developed this antibody against my platelet factor 4. That has started causing thrombosis. And now I need anticoagulant. If for an anticoagulant, I'm given heparin and my body, let's say, respond to that in the similar way, 
that it creates antibodies which are against platelet factor 4 because of heparin, then I would have doubled the damage instead of a recovery. So this is again out of abundance of caution that heparin is contraindicated in these patients. Shinji Speaks says, FDA Philippines and other doctors assert that there is no strong evidence that ivermectin works since FLCCC data shows that it is combined with other drugs. That's um, not really the right way to look at it. Otherwise, you would take ivermectin out and say other drugs. And, and if it is combined with other drugs, then combine it with other drugs. If you are satisfied with those data points, and let's say it is vitamin D plus hydroxy or quercetin plus zinc plus ivermectin, and that has been very efficacious, then do the whole thing. What's so bad about that? These are just excuses. These are just people trying to, including YouTube. YouTube also says, hey, WHO said no, then it is no. So these folks are just, um, if you actually go and look at these folks who are making these decisions, you would find one of the two problems. Either you would find an egotistic person who does not want to listen. And at some point he had put his word out that I don't believe in it. And now he is just um, dug in. Or the second one would be you would find somebody who does not want to do a research or does not want to, uh, with an open mind, look at the mechanisms. So one of these two. There, there are third as well. And that is people who have their interest in something else. And they want to intentionally uh, bad mouth or break down ivermectin type uh, systems so that they can have something else. But that is, uh, that's a different thing. Uh, Aruj says, would you recommend a breastfeeding mother to take the vaccine, AstraZeneca in this case? I would use um, Israel's data. They have given vaccines and they have been giving Pfizer. They have administered vaccines to, the, um, uh, to pregnant women. Now, from a mechanism point of view, let's say AstraZeneca, knowing the risk, and let's say you decide that, hey, I want to take AstraZeneca, the importance of the vaccination even for a breastfeeding mother is that once a vaccine is given she would produce mother would produce immunoglobulin a that will be secreted or given out in her breast milk which would be protective for the child as well so for a, for a pregnant woman she, a pregnant woman will produce igg that would go through the placenta and protect the child even after birth for a few months and a breastfeeding woman would provide protection through IgA. So from a mechanism point of view, from a theoretical point of view, it is beneficial. But you have to look at the side effects and you have to talk with the with your doctor. Anna says, is it okay to take the Pfizer vaccine if you have the arthritis? So Anna, what I saw was that uh, what I'm observing within my own family and outside that when somebody takes a vaccine, there is a temporary increase in immune system's response, which causes other things that are under inflammatory state, their inflammation to increase as well. So if somebody has, let's say, joint pains, then they take a vaccine. It is possible that their joint pain would increase for some days. Usually that subsides, but there are some cases where things do not subside. I would recommend to look at the FDA briefing and I have done those discussions in the past as well. You can probably watch my video or just read the document by yourself. In the FDA briefing, they would have talked about the side effects and if there are any that are permanent. I do not think that inflammatory side effects are permanent, but there have been people who have had tinnitus, which is not going away. There are people who have had Bell's palsy, which is, uh, I think, uh, becoming permanent. We are seeing some other side effects too. So just do your research for your specific condition I don't think that it is going to be more than a few days, that there would be slight increase in the pain. Fiona says, UK are trialing mix and match of vaccines, for example, AstraZeneca, first dose, Moderna, second. What are your thoughts? I love it. 
because at the end of the day, I have said it many times, the difference will only come to be the dose difference. And that is, let's say the first dose and the booster dose, is there a difference in them? Otherwise, Moderna is producing a spike protein. Pfizer is producing a spike protein. AstraZeneca is producing a spike protein through adenovirus. Johnson & Johnson is producing a spike protein. The inactivated viruses have the spike protein in them. So at the end of the day, they are all giving the body a taste of the actual infection. And that most of them are giving spike proteins. That means one should be able to mix and match them. So in theory, it is fine. The trial would, would give us the data that would reflect on the duration of the administration, the distance between the two, and the doses of the two. Jem says, did Dr. Bean say Bell's palsy adverse effect is permanent? Did I miss her? Yeah, no. So I said that there were some Bell's palsy. So I actually talked about Johnson & Johnson a few days ago. And this is also with others too, in which they had said that there were, I think, six cases of Bell's palsy and one was still not recovered. So there is a possibility of some neurological symptoms that may become permanent. But again, uh, one should see what uh, vaccine they're looking at. Most of the cases I've seen. So for my own uh, community, the folks that are around me, nobody has said to me that my Bell's palsy was permanent. There have been people who said, hey, I had a problem with the face and jaw. Uh, the one that mostly have said that our symptoms have still not gone are tinnitus. Tinnitus is something that has a couple of folks who, who've uh, talked with me separately saying that, hey, two months in or three months in, I still do not have my tinnitus actually gone. And with that, I would actually, this reminds me because this cool bean gave me permission to discuss their situation just so that it may help others as well. So this, this cool bean is from New York. They are a a nurse practitioner himself and here is so he has a very long history here but i wanted to just talk about a few things that are of interest so thank you jem for asking this question that led us here so <clears throat> he's a research nurse pr practitioner in cornell and he received pfizer developed tinnitus this is january 19 and still the tinnitus has not gone so he started figuring out how do he take care of it, his healthy 51-year-old. Um, so took his second dose, January 19, had right eye discomfort with mild facial tingling, and then uh, tinnitus started around four to five days later. Coupled with ear fullness, pressure, and ear discomfort. I felt that as well with Moderna. I felt that my ear was just full for three, four days. And I just kept having a lot. So I still am doing this. Uh, that means I still have some remnant pain here. So I had a lot of pain in this area and in, in the throat. Then um, he went to ENT and they tried certain drugs. But what he wanted to share was, he said, I stumbled upon histamine and took a chance. I started Zyrtec 10 milligram. So he, I think he tried fluvoxamine and that did not help. On the other hand, when we talk about another very popular doctor, uh, he developed tinnitus after the actual infection and he took fluvoxamine and became 100% okay. Here, so I asked them, I told them that hey, fluvoxamine has been helpful. And he said, I tried it and it didn't help me. And he started taking antihistamines and he, so he took Zyrtec 10 milligram, low histamine diet. And the result was that he said, I started improving. I tried fluvoxamine, but that increased the uh, tinnitus instead of reducing it. Then he says that um, he sent me his uh, some, some of his reports. Now he's saying that his basophil count so he sent me a report. Let me just very quickly look at it. His basophil count was increased. So the second things now he's doing is he's trying to figure out how to uh, manage his basophils as well. 
uh, in addition to all of them, them, he wanted to share his general um, supplements that he used that are now helping reduce that inflammatory situation. So this is a very long list, but he takes mushrooms, magnesium, citrazine, alpha lipoic acid, GABA, flonase, quercetin, zinc, uh, black cumin seed, ultimate omega, famatridine, turmeric. Most of these are things that I had been talking about. Vitamin D, and uh, you said today at 7.41, vitamin C, uh, <laughs> olipurine, and then low histamine diet. So this is um, this has lessened my symptoms of tinnitus, palpitation, and high blood pressure and insomnia, but not fully. I suspect there is more to the story and he's working on it. So because he's a research NP, he has this uh, propensity to go figure out what is happening. So I thought he had given me permission to talk about these. Maybe these can help somebody else who has the tinnitus as well. So again, we started from Jem's question about Bell's palsy and we ended up with the tinnitus. So some folks have talked about some symptoms that have not recovered. For Bell's palsy, nobody in my group, my cool beans, have reported that the Bell's palsy has been permanent. They have said it occurred and then it went away. Okay, so this is correct. A gentle loving self-massage of the thymus can be positive influence on the immune system. That is correct. Uh, Colin Hamill says, uh, would using the vaccine from India along with a spike protein based one give your immune system more ways to fight? Yes. So Indian, um, I'm sure that you're talking about the inactivated virus. Yes, so inactivated virus would provide a larger set of antigens or epitopes to the immune system to learn to fight against. So when the actual virus comes in, our body knows a lot more ways. So you're correct. So Diane says, could that be why NIH cannot approve? There are, um, I think that the basic idea is the same. People say this very, very often. And that is, if there is an approved drug, then the vaccines and anything else cannot be suggested, approved for this. So they have to keep the status in a, in a way to say there is nothing approved and there is nothing that is curative. And because of that, then they can continue to authorize other things. And that is not only vaccine. It's not a conspiracy for vaccine. They, they are remdesivir is in a similar ballpark. And the other uh, BAM lenivimab is in the same uh, situation. I think it is more of a interest-based thing. It's not just vaccine. Interest can be with drugs as well. For example, Merck has successfully caused damage to ivermectin by saying we are the makers and we think it's not useful but now they are coming up with the drug which is actually a very similar similar drug to the ivermectin molecule has one function of the ivermectin and they they are now pitching that drug for uh, uh, covid so this is how these interests play out hey luffy so luffy has his uh, the song of his people started <laughs> so they have their own little <laughs> discussion going. Um, let's see. Morehouse Joplin says Moderna dose 2 will be much worse. Let's see what happens. Um, GB says, question sir, can you please explore the possibility of Evans syndrome after AZ? This should be explored as I suffered hit like thing with peculiar low neutrophils, low RBC, low platelets, high D dimers. Hmm. We should. OK, I would look at it. So let me take down that as a note. And those who actually have their uh, suggestions and then they wonder when is it going to be, uh, you can see that I do about three to four talks every day. And then the topics are still there are so many outstanding topics to talk about uh, 
Uh, Anna says, the latest research says that the antibodies after six months are still present in big quantity. Can this mean that the antibodies can last around one year or more? So Anna, um, good news is that the cool beans who have been with me for about a year, we knew this thing from long ago. The reason is that for SARS-CoV-2, we know that the previous SARS-CoV-1 SARS-CoV studies had shown that the antibodies stayed on for two years and then waned in the third year. So the people had protection up to three years. This is why I kept saying that, hey, once somebody is infected, they would have a good coverage. And the other study was, again, for SARS-CoV-1, that the T cell memory cells stayed on for 10 years. So maybe they should have tested more after 10 years, but they tested up to 10 years. So that means immunity can to coronaviruses can last for two to three years to 10 years. Having said that, these are older viruses, uh, different uh, variants, although the same family of viruses, they're 86% the same to SARS-CoV-2. My suspicion is that SARS-CoV-2, either vaccine or the infection, will produce a similar long-lasting effect as well. And as the time is passing, there are doctors who are doing the study every month to continue to check the antibodies. So there are, Anna, there are actually studies that show eight months as well now. So there are studies that show even after the six months. So yes, this would mean that we would have a longer lasting study, uh, sorry, protection. So if you're asking for one month, yes, uh, one year, yes. I think it is gonna be two to three years. So very good question. M and M says, can the nanoparticles of the vaccine like polyethylene glycol or others get into the fet fetus? Beautiful question. So first of all, the nanoparticle is a whole vaccine particle, not the polyethylene glyc glycol. That particle has the piece polyethylene glycol in it as well as the composition. When it is given in deltoid, majority of it will be immediately take, be taken up by macrophages, dendritic cells, neutrophils, and other cells in the vicinity. Because the nanoparticle is made up of lipids, it would be very red, rapidly entering the cells. The Why we made it, or these companies made it with lipid, is so that it can easily enter the cells. So um, because of that, it, it does not have any chances to actually traverse through the blood, then get filtered at the placenta and then go to the child. And even if it did end up in the child, it is not harmful, but traversing all that pathway, I have discussed it many times, is impossible for a tiny dose of vaccine to do. What it has to do is it has to escape picking up here. Then it has to somehow enter the blood system and escape getting swept away in lymph. And then from the blood system, it has to then end up at the placenta, get filtered there. Placenta is very, very um, tough as well, very strict as well in who can cross and who cannot. Then it has to filter there as well and then end up with the baby. So good question. And um, I don't think it can reach there. And I, <laughs> some people make a comment, I don't think is not science. This is from a scientific point of view, which I just explained, and I can explain those mechanisms as well if needed. So Christopher says, report of clothing with mRNA as well. I, I think that you're, you're asking about clotting. So the, I'm sure that there are reports of that as well. The doctor from uh, Florida uh, who had Pfizer, I believe, he developed idiopath idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. That, I think, is an example of this. There may be more. Hey, Luffy. What's going on? Did you eat your food? Okay, jo Jody says, does the vaccine train T cells as well as the wild type virus? Um, so, good question. Wild type virus would train our B and T cells against a lot more antigens because it is a whole body of the virus compared to just the spike protein. 
the reasons that the vaccines chose to use spike protein. <laughs> so these these are both Luffy and Kyrie playing here. Uh, so the the reason that that they chose to use the spike protein is because neutralizing or binding with the spike protein neutralizes the virus from entering the cell, and it just has the virus has to die. So because of that, the result is similar, but the wild type infection would prepare our body for much more of the antibodies. I would remiss if I didn't say this, that wild type has a chance of killing a person as well. So I would always prefer vaccine over the wild type infection. Scarlett says, how long does it take ivermectin to take effect as a prophylaxis? So the um, prophylaxis studies have shown it within a month. <laughs> Sorry about the, the cats. So uh, what happens is, uh, for example, in India or in Egypt, the studies that they did was they started people, let's say on day one, day three, then biweekly or just twice in a month. And then they saw these folks afterwards in a month, and they there was seventy four percent efficacious. So that means it starts immediately. The drug itself becomes at its peak level within four to six hours of taking it. So um, I would think that within a few hours it should start working. So Ed, one very good question. Can the mRNA be done with information from all the virus? Yes. So having the whole virus's genetic code means the whole virus. So that is the problem. We don't want to do that. So usually what they would do is they'll take pieces that are of interest, where if the antibodies attack that, that would be sufficient to neutralize the virus. But from a theoretical point of view, can we take the whole RNA and make it into a vaccine yes that is what the virus does it comes in and gives us its rna we use that to make more viruses and then those viruses are presented and then our body react to it so imagine the whole virus itself is the full mrna mrna vaccine Anubhav says, this is not about COVID, but if someone uses earphones for very long hours, but on lower volumes, would it cause ear damage? I think on lower volumes, it will not, but still you are going to exhaust your muscles. So uh, low volume is fine. High volume can damage. And I do not know what is long hours. My own children do this, and I ask them not to do it very often. Um, Question GB, sir, we are exploring artemisinin, artemisinin and high dose of vitamin D to stop the helper 17 and tumor growth factor beta response. Very, very interesting. Interesting. Good luck and tell us what you find. George says, if a boost is needed in the near future, could a poliovalent spike variant RNA-based vaccine be possible? Maybe. So we'll see. I think what they are going to do is, so I think you're saying is polyvalent, multiple variations of the spike. That is what Moderna has already said, that we're going to make a cocktail of the vaccine where we'll have multiple RNAs for various kinds of vaccine structure, uh, spike structures. So good idea. Uh, 
Um, so let's do a couple of more questions and then we stop. Uh, Travelist says, I was sick around 10 days ago with runny nose and sore throat. Going to test station today. Which method would be best to use? PCR, antigen, antibody. So 10 days ago with runny nose, and if you have recovered, you may still have some PCR positive antigens, but mostly the antibodies will be present too. So if you can get both, then get them both because you're kind of at the border. Afia says, and Afia, I hope that you're doing okay with that um, volcano and the ash and everything. Does vitamin D helps with inflammation in the joints or even gout? Vitamin D helps stabilize the cells and modulate the immune system, which is part of the triggering entity for inflammation. So it should improve it for sure. Frank, Fran says, about masks, in UK, we still have to wear in public indoor places. Lots of data studies indicate masks not helpful. What's your current thinking? Most of that, um, those studies are just trash studies. They're just trash studies like WHO picked up whatever data they wanted and did it. Nowadays, one can find studies to their liking. And so there are many such studies. I'm not uh, a fan of these studies. Bambi says, what would be the cause of early, heavy, prolonged uh, period in women post any COVID vaccine? Uh, Kate on Twitter is researching. What will be the cause of early, heavy, prolonged period in women? So the, I have not read the mechanism. The only, the only reason I can think of is the following, and this may be totally wrong. So I am in a in a medical fantasy land at this time to say this. So what can happen is that the COVID, when the vaccine is given, the vaccine uh, introduces lots of pro-inflammatory cytokines or cytokines. The benefit of the cytokines is to cause cell replications. This is why I had been saying that, hey, when the vaccine, and why did somebody in my family who's knee joint was already hurting, increased hurting. The reason is that wherever there is cell division going on and wherever there is um, inflammation going on, that would be accentuated, amplified by the inflammatory material generated and triggered by the vaccines. So it is possible that the uh, area for the uterus, which is undergoing their change, would also be affected by the inflammatory cytokines and more cells are produced and more are shed and that causes the heavy bleeding. Uh, this is, again, not a mechanism I've read, read somewhere, so I'm, I'm postulating I may be totally wrong. This is how studies come together. So somebody postulates something and says, I think this is what may be happening. And then they say, all right, why not we do a study on that? And that is how it works forward. Cool. So uh, how about we break for now today? And we'll continue. One more question. Uh, first name says, uh, question, do you know how likely someone is to not transmit the virus with Moderna vaccine? There are no studies. Pfizer had done some uh, research and they said after having the vaccine fully vaccinated, there is about 70, 74% reduction in transmission. So I do not know about Moderna that if they have done some, something similar. Um, our patron forever says, should check all people who had adverse reaction to vaccine to see if they were already immune and that caused adverse reaction to vaccine. Many doctors say the recovered should not risk vaccine. The, here is the deal. Recovered would get the infection again as well. And if they are going to re respond negatively to that, to the vaccine, they're going to respond negatively to infection as well. So I don't think that this is the right mechanism. However, I, I don't believe in vaccine after the infection because infection has already generated the protection that is going to go on for a longer period of time. Margaret says, thank you, Dr. Bean. Please stay safe and happy. Thank you very much. And you too. So thank you, everyone, for being here, for being with me. 
and uh, i would see some of you this evening and others tomorrow stay safe happy and healthy please like subscribe and share and there are three links in this uh, video one is to buy me a coffee it does not need paypal then there is one more link that is for becoming a patron and one more link if you would like to support this work thank you very much and i would see you tomorrow bye bye and some of you today <laughs>